All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt and Jake here coming to you with another Torah portion. And Jake, what are we on? This is Pookie Doo. Pookie Doo. <laughs> it's a Peku Day or something. And uh, <laughs> this is week 23. And this is a the second part of a double portion, I believe. Uh, this is accounts. Yeah. Um, and we'll be going, this ties in with our last portion. You can check that out. Um, and this goes all the way up to Exodus 40, verse 38. And so in this one, Jake, we see we have this comparison between the priestly garments are a lot like the armor of God that we read about in Ephesians. Yes, they are. So, uh, so yeah, in this in this part, he starts talking about all the, uh, the things that are going into how the priest is going to dress up for for their activities. Um, and then, so here in Ephesians, he says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. <clears throat> stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And I didn't put the address down here, but it's <clears throat> Ephesians 6. Okay, Ephesians but, 6. But most people are familiar with the scripture. Yeah. But uh, I think it's kind of interesting to tie these two concepts together. And so, Jake, what is the breastplate of righteousness in the tabernacle? It's a the breastplate that has all the... Uh, stones representing the 12 tribes in it so how do how does that the breast how do you think that could be how could how can you make that connection that uh, and call that a breastplate of righteousness with well the i would tribes? i would look at it like they are to be a righteous nation going out and you know witnessing to the other nations and being an example for the other nations and so that that also that covers your heart and so that's a you know a heart issue. Your righteousness is a heart issue. It's mm -hmm. not like uh, mm -hmm. coming from something else. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I would tie that in. It's It has to do with the 12 tribes being a righteous nation. Yeah. And there's so many things you could say here. You know, you could say the feet with the gospel of peace or like the feet of Jacob when he meets Esau. He, Jacob had the gospel of peace on his feet when he meets his brother. And, you know, he could have gone to war with his brother. He could have been like, yeah, I'm gonna, I've got the the prophecies on my side. Right. And uh, I'm going to take care of this. But but he doesn't. He comes in peace purposefully. Right. It's in everywhere you go, bring, you know, have peace about you. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the shield of faith with Joseph, you know. Basically, uh, Joseph's carrying the shield of faith when the lady comes after him, when the cougar lady He's like, come here, young boy. And uh, he's got the shield of faith, you know, to to, to get away from that. So, right. and, you know, you just can see these elements, um, the, you know, and then, you know, even later in Daniel, you know, Daniel's a great example of his loins uh, were guarded with truth. And he stood in that truth, no matter what happened to him, you know, he stood in it. But it's pretty powerful. It's a lot more powerful. I think when you put it in the full context of scripture and you see that people have lived out different parts of this, right. And it's been there the whole time. Yeah. That we've had examples of all these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause it, it and, and before I came into tour, this was kind of abstract. I'm like, you know, but, but, you know, in with Bible class and, you know, and they would bring in a knight's armor and be like, kids look, and, you know, I don't know. That makes it exciting. It does. But it, it does. doesn't it's really tie into. But I think it's better to tie it back into scripture than to tie it back into Babylon. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I think too often we get, you know, Babylon takes over and then those are the examples we use. But. Well, and I think <clears> when we talk about to our children, we need to we need to focus more. And then Torah naturally enables us to do this, the telling the, the story of these people because yeah. they are ancestors and, and, and pointing our children back to them and, and back to their roots. Right. So anyone check it out. So the tabernacle is kind of coming together here 
And uh, so, but once again, Jake, what do you have here in the tabernacle? You have this, uh, it's kind of a reflection of many things. One of the things it's a reflection of is us. Um, and uh, so you have the, you know, the woke of their hands are coming together. They're, they're still kind of finishing up the, the tabernacle here. So uh, the way it's like us, you know, we're, which we've described in the last week, but it, it carries on to this week, this movable structure covered in flesh, right? And there's the bread of life, the fruit of the vine, um, this covering in gold. What's the covering of gold? How's that like us? So we did a teaching on gold on the ceiling. I can't remember if that's what you I know that. we keep saying gold on but the ceiling. I don't know if it was a big part of it. That, but, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, you have this word shemin, which means his essence is glory. And so this covering of his gold, you know, it's the gold and the oil. It, it's, it's an interesting teaching. If you've never explored all that, you, you know, that's a, that's a place you could go to, to look. But, and it was this concept of an all consuming fire that never goes out. That's and that's supposed, how, how is that supposed to be in us that all consuming fire? Uh, that's the, <clears throat> the fire of, you know, being about, uh, the father's business. It's the fire of, of, uh, being interested in what he's interested in and, and purifying, uh, our inner, our in, inner man. Mm -hmm. And that's harder to do than, than said, because we, you know, we don't always do the right thing. It, it, it doesn't come naturally. We kind of have to force ourselves to do some things. And, um, and sometimes we just we're like, eh, I don't want to do that. We yeah. Don't, yeah. I think a lot of this stuff, since it doesn't come naturally, that's why he tells us. That's why he writes it down for us. Yeah. It's because it yeah. doesn't come naturally. And it's painful to burn. Let's face it. It's painful to burn these things off. It takes effort and energy and it hurts. Yeah. We're a short sighted kind of culture specifically, yeah. but a short sighted people in, in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't want, you want to skip anything that that's painful and go right to the thing that's pleasurable. Yeah. yeah we're not into the slow burn on anything. You know, we want, Instant success. I take this pill and I lose 500 pounds. Right. Great. Give it to me. <laughs> do I have to run and do all that? No, I don't want to do that. So anyway, and then you've got the light of the world in there and right. the tabernacle. And uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Right. And then do we, once again, you have the light of the light of the world. And then what's this concept of, as you approach the Lord, you must reflect, uh, reflect upon yourself in the laver. What's a laver? So that's the, bath bowl the bird bath thing that they have there before they go in they uh wash their hands and stuff in the in the laver and then they are able to go into the into the tent um i didn't, I didn't mean to jump ahead there jake well i was just gonna talk real fast but um so that's kind of what that's talking about and and you would you know see your reflection and make sure that you are clean before you go in front of you yeah, it's it's a it's a way of uh you hear it today uh where how can that guy stand to look himself in the mirror it's mm -hmm. like well if you're if you're a dirt ball you shouldn't be able to look at yourself in the mirror right are that's you, the kind of the thought process are you referring to michael jackson uh, man in the mirror i don't know <laughs> no. but no. <laughs> i wasn't but it's, uh, it's... thanks for tying that in <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But yes, it, it, exactly what you, you were talking about. And and he had to have the right garments on that, you know, just not just anybody went into the holy, holy holies, you know, who who goes into the holy of holies here? The person with the uh, armor of Yah, the priestly garments. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't just Joe Blow didn't just walk in there. And right. if he did, it didn't end well for no. them. So, it started to stink until they tore down and went to the next. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, but the, we're not going to make the time I said, but um, <laughs> so, but this whole idea of cleansing yourself, it doesn't it kind of make you think of a mikvah or a baptism? Yeah. That's yeah. A, kind of a reflection on that. And um, what, what about this concept of being covered in prayer and the incense? You know, they've got the incense burner and that's happening. And there's, a, there's fire also involved because you can't have incense without fire, at least that I'm aware of. Right. And so how do, how do you, how do you, how does that tie in with the prayer? 
so the the incense is to rise up and be um uh indicative of you know us reaching up to yah and that kind of thing and so uh later on you see in psalms uh about how your prayers are in as sweet incense mm -hmm. and a savor unto unto yah and so <clears throat> You know, without a priesthood and a temple and a tabernacle, you know, the way that looks for us today is prayer, you know, mm -hmm. is, is sending, it's, it's a relationship and that's, that's what Yah wants is, is connection with him. Mm -hmm. And that's what the incense was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was a constant remind, reminder and like they could smell it, you know, uh, see it and this, and then over and over through these portions you see the sacrificing and you know for a long time i'm like what is the deal with all the sacrificing why so much blood and you know um but it's talking about you know getting rid of the impurities and and being willing to offer it up and burn it off and you know just like in our hearts for it to be like that constant fire that's burning to burn off that impurity and there's also this concept of discretion you know because Jake has butchered a few things and you got to have some discretion about what you cut away and how you do it. And, 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 you know, there are parts that you, you literally cut away and you put in the ground because they're not fit for human consumption. Or, right. Um, and, but you got to have a lot of discernment as you do those things. You don't just willy nilly, you know, if you do, it's not going to turn out. Very good. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one's no. going to ever, even you say, Hey, you want some of my, deer venison and people are gonna be like uh no no i think i'll pass on that <laughs> it's like uh in judges when uh uh i can't remember the guy's name now he sneaks into it to, has a secret for the king and really he's he's gonna stab him oh, uh -huh. and the guy's real fat and he stabs him and all the dirt comes Is out Ehud? Ehud? Yes, i think so mm, and all that swallows the sword yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And all that dirt comes out. That dirt mm -hmm. is uh, the poop. Yes. yes uh, uh -huh. Yeah. You don't, you want, don't that want that. In the meat. You don't want that when you're. Yeah. You don't so. want to hear a hunter go. You know, I just take it and I put it all on a giant grinder and grind it up, and we just have ground everything. Yeah. You would not want that. Right. You don't want the dirt getting. You don't in want there. the hair. <laughs> so this chili is hairy. Mm. Nobody ever ever will come visit you. Right. So anyway, I don't know how we got the hairy chili. I, so <laughs> at all, at all ties. This in. chili really puts hair on your chest. Wait, no. Yeah. Okay. Back anyway. to this. <laughs> so, so yeah, and then the the burning off the impurities, similar to like if you're you know a melting down gold mm -hmm. to purify it or silver, you know you know it's done when you can see a reflection in it and mm -hmm. all the impurities are out of it. Yeah. And then at the end of this, you've got the cloud of fire at night and shade in the day. So, you know, I always think of this, he provided for him. So, you know, um, I wonder though, at the cloud of fire at night, you know, was that hard to sleep by? Did it like, was it a giant nightlight? Did it make sound? Maybe it was like white noise? Maybe. I don't know. I, I like sleeping next to the fire when I'm camping. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it did get cold in the desert. So. Maybe it keeps did. away all the all the scary animals. It does, <laughs> you know, uh, the lions and things like that, because they do live in a part of the world where the north end of where lions can roam. And um, yeah, I, that, that, I hadn't thought about that. And then in the day, it did provide shade. So, you know, he he provided for their for everything. Yeah. And it was it, like uh, the original chemtrails, right? <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> And then it, it does go back to the garden, the garden connection. You know, I believe the climate in the garden was very favorable, and he 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 tried to make the climate conditions favorable for them in the desert. Mm -hmm. Just uh, some things that you don't really think about, but this is partly human comfort. Yeah, you don't hear a lot about them uh, succumbing to uh, the wilderness, mm -hmm. like uh, ex from exposure. Yeah, yeah. So that is. Pookie do, Pookie do, <laughs> Pookie do accounts. Uh, Exodus thirty eight twenty one to forty thirty eight. All right, and we appreciate you stopping by. Always appreciate subscriptions, likes, comments, thumbs up. 
just let us know you're out there. Share it with your friends. And thank you for stopping by Sabbath Lounge. This is Matt and, and Jake signing out.